Yeah, yeah, check one, two, check one, two. Is this mic on? Is this mic on? Hey, listen, man. It's the one and only Trent of the DJ Sense, and you're listening to Cocktails. Dirty Discussions with Kiki and Medina Monroe. Yeah. We declare our right on this earth to be a man, to be a human being, to be respected as a human being, to be given the rights of a human being, in this society, on this earth, in this day, which we intend to bring into existence by any means necessary. You have the power to change perception, to inspire and empower, and to show people how to embrace their complications and see the flaws and the true beauty and strength that's inside all of us. Change will not come if we wait for some other person or if we wait for some other time. We are the ones we've been waiting for. For those who marched and for those who prayed and for those who sang and bled and for those who believed and for those who died, I stand as 10,000 to the 10th power. Hey guys, welcome to Cocktail Story Discussions. This week, we will not be doing a regular episode. Um, we both felt that it was a bit insensitive to continue on with our usual program, and we're going to do something different. Yep, we um, want to make sure that everyone knows we are in support of standing against bol- police brutality. Uh, we see what's going on in the world. We hear you. We are with y'all. And we don't really feel funny this week. I feel heavy. I feel confused. I feel sad. Um, This has been a heavy, what's going on in the world, just everything from coronavirus to what happened with George Floyd. Um, I'm just at a loss for words almost. And all of the other stories that we hear about or barely hear about, there's been so many cases over the years, but even this year, um, Mm -hmm. going out and even looking online and just seeing different people's stories and then hearing people share their experiences. And thankfully, I haven't had a bad experience, but it doesn't mean that it doesn't happen. And sadly, I've been seeing a lot of people feel like because they haven't personally been a victim that they don't get it. And it's really it's frustrating to hear. It's frustrating to see. It's like, how out of touch can you be? Now, I know you you had texted me and you were saying that you were feeling really heavy. What's been what's been going through your head? Um, A lot. And there's so many layers to everything that's going on that each conversation you have with someone is always different. Um, I have been feeling heavy from not really knowing that much about politics, not knowing really anything about the local officials that part is what's bothering me. And most, most people do not as the conversations that I've had, it's like, what district do you, I was talking to my sister who is a news anchor and she was like, do you know what district you live in? Do you know your, the, the senators, the representatives, do you, have you ever been to a town hall meeting? Not in a challenging, like I'm challenging my wokeness type of way. It was just a, you know, a conversation of what happens after the, the protesting. Um, do we, how do we follow through with this? And so the heavy part for me is really learning the knowledge of how do we keep doing this after the protests die down? What's next? What are the next steps? And I don't really, I've never really liked politics. I'm not going to lie. I've been one of those people where it's like, I think when we vote, our voices aren't really heard. I don't. Yeah, I remember having that conversation with you before. And I voted, but then I got to the point where I was like, I don't really, this doesn't matter. But yeah, I think a lot of people feel like you and they don't understand. I was just on um, Instagram live earlier with DJ Sturgis. We did his podcast one time. He said, hello, by the way. And we were talking about it. I was like, yeah, you know, I went out yesterday and I protested. Um, And I, when I talk to people, um, I've been really trying to tell them how important it is to vote. And sadly, I think that a lot of people outside of presidential elections and possibly the government 
government, po- I mean, not government, possibly the governor, possibly the mayor, but especially the presidential election is what people go out and vote for. And they don't understand um, the pow- the actual power that a president has and how the government works, like aside from just political affiliations and things. People don't seem to truly understand how people get into the positions that they are in. And so I was sharing how important it is to not only know who's running for the office, but to understand the different roles that different people have. And it starts at your local government. It starts within the cities and the counties and the states. And people need to understand who polices the police, the sheriff. That's an elected position. The district attorney elected, the mayor elected, your city council people who represent your different districts or or wards or whatever they may call them wherever you guys live. Those are the people who can fight for the issues that represent smaller groups. And it's just like smaller groups represent more and more people and it goes up. And so when the president and the U.S. senators and Congress people are making laws. Yeah, they're making laws and those are important. But if you get arrested for a petty crime, when the police pull you over, you're dealing with your local government. It's very rare that anything is going to happen and it go all the way up to the Supreme Court. You need to know who's representing you in these cities, who's making the decisions where you live. And it's so important to understand not only who is in power, but how they get there. And I think that once people have a greater understanding of how our system works, then they can vote, then they will be more participatory with it. Then change can happen because at this point, a lot of the people, they take advantage of the fact that many people don't truly understand how it works, that people don't know who's who. And we can't fix, they're not going to fix the system because it's working in their favor. Many of the people who are in positions of power already. And that's why I tell people to vote. It's important. I know if you're in Georgia, um, we started voting a while ago, but it's next Tuesday, the 9th. Um, and other states I've posted it. I know lots of people have posted it. Just Google it. Check and make sure that you're already registered to vote. Know where you're supposed to go to vote. Don't rely on people to give you this information. They won't. And then also, I want to also let you guys know that if you are starting late and you there are some things you don't know, don't be embarrassed. Just start now. Ask if you, questions. If you aren't, yeah, ask questions. Like I literally, if you're one of the people where you get embarrassed when you don't know something, sometimes I'm like that. When it comes to politics, I am truly like that. If you, I checked to see if I was registered to vote today. I was still registered in Dallas. I had to register. I can't vote next Tuesday, but I can vote in November. Don't feel bad. Don't feel embarrassed. Just ask questions. And that is how we start doing this thing. Let If you know, if you have a friend that's a lawyer and you don't know your rights, learn your rights. If you don't know about politics, just just learn about them. Go to a town hall meeting. Look up. I don't think they're doing them like in person right now, but through Zoom. I was. They have something on June fifteenth with um with city council, city council members. Mm-hmm. You can learn about different things that they have going on. And I think that that part protesting is great, but after the protesting, that's also going to be very impactful. So we just have to remember that. I I don't want to see it die down. Yeah. And then also, I want to say something to the people who do know stuff, because this is very frustrating to me. Um, And I was having a talk with some friends yesterday about it. When you know something, especially about things like this, like with the whole Blackout Tuesday thing that was going on, and people are going on rants on social media, calling people stupid and ignorant and all of this other stuff because of what they chose to post and not posting it right, posting the wrong hashtag and all of that, and saying it's not going to help. You're not helping either by going on rants, calling people stupid. Why not help the person? They obviously don't know. Many people are trying to show their solidarity. Many people don't know. Many people are confused. They're getting conflicting information. If you know something, then share the information instead of getting on your high horse and calling everybody stupid. I've been feeling that way, not even just with like police brutality and the injustices and racism, but even with coronavirus, I've been very frustrated with many people who are going on these rants, calling everybody stupid for going places, not staying in the house, wearing the wrong kind of masks, um, 
not doing things the way that they would do them. It's like, hey, share the information with people instead of trying to block everybody or unfollowing people, calling them stupid. Oh, you don't watch the news. Maybe they don't. Everybody don't have a TV. Mm-hmm. Everybody doesn't have a computer at home. Every Some people are working. They can't be on their phone. Some people are missing information. Some people are getting misinformation. Like if you have it and you see somebody doing wrong, help them. Like people don't seem to want to help. Um, and then with the protesting, yes, I think you can't just stop at protesting um, because that gets attention. And then it makes people aware that there's a problem, but it doesn't fix anything. Mm-hmm. So I hope that if you have been protesting or you're going out and protesting that you do challenge yourself and don't stop there and figure out, hey, what are my strengths and weaknesses? What can I really do to help people? Maybe you can't even vote. So you can't do that part. But maybe you can learn about it and you can help other people. Or maybe you can volunteer somewhere. Maybe you can. I don't I never knew about every state has a local chapter. Every city has a local chapter called ACLU. Have you ever heard of that? Mm hmm. I've never heard of it. It's the um, American Civil Liberty Union. So maybe you can go and do some volunteering or learn some, just learn something. I challenge everybody to learn about something about politics and whatever it is that you are focused on fixing. Um, Yeah. And then I also challenge everybody to challenge your own personal thoughts and the things that you say on a day-to-day basis when it comes to um, the inequalities that people suffer and the racism. It can be something very small that you say or that you do to somebody, and it could be something very large, but all of those things play a part in it. When you mm-hmm. are always negative or treat a certain group a certain way or have a horrible outlook on them, and then you continue to pass that outlook on to other people or make other people feel like it's okay, to think so negatively about a group you're contributing to the problem in my opinion and it's like don't just check yourself and we all make mistakes but I hope that we can all learn from them and just try to be a better person try to learn more try to help more just be a good person to people Mm -hmm. and treat people the way that you would like to be treated I think it's really important Because sometimes that gets lost. I think another thing I just kind of wanted to touch on is making, I I don't agree with, obviously I don't agree with racism, um, but I also don't agree with trying to make white people or others feel bad. Um, What do you mean? When they, I have a best friend. Her name is Hannah. She is my very best friend. She didn't grow up as a black person. So there are sometimes questions that people want to ask to understand, to have a better understanding about um, systemic racism. If they, if they didn't grow up black, they just simply don't understand some of the struggles. I'm not talking about police, police brutality. I don't want anyone to take my words and be like, and you on here trying to take it for the white people? Absolutely not. But I think that sometimes people have questions and they get a little nervous to ask because we get so on edge, like you should just understand. But some people don't understand. And sometimes the conversations are hard to have, but they're also okay to have. Like, I just want, y'all to understand that I've been having a lot of conversations with some of my friends who aren't black and just like teaching them things like that's that's really it just I don't I don't like trying to make teaching them like, things like what like some people don't understand like what are some because you know they, some people that listen to the show they may feel the same way and not so. understanding really what what White, white privilege like why do you have white privilege not understanding that's really what it is like are are you saying or understanding that, what it is or understanding what it is and why you have it and it does stem from like slavery and how we've been so far behind for so long I know I was talking to Hannah about um what is it called the Homestead Act mm-hmm. um where, you know, the white people got to run, stake their land, and y'all just automatically got land. You got, you, your people got to own free land, and a lot of that land gets passed on down to your people. We didn't get to do that. <laughs> we never mm-hmm. had that opportunity to do that when slaves were, when slavery was We were a part of the property that you yeah, got. Yeah, we were part of the property. And sometimes they don't look at that side of it because they, that's, it just, 
wasn't their life because it's given to them. And so when something is constantly given to you, some people, they don't recognize it. Mm -hmm. And I hear that. Um, and even if you don't have somebody to ask, look up what it is Mm -hmm. and don't be so combative. I don't think that all other people are bad, but the problem lies when you choose to continue to be ignorant to the issues that you see people going through. You have to try to find some sort of understanding. People are not out here protesting and being angry and posting all day and forming organizations for something we made up in our head because our feelings are hurt. You know, this, these are real issues that continue to go on. And when you just choose to ignore it, cause it's not your problem, that's a problem. So if you have done that, please stop and try to learn. Even if you don't have a person that you can go to, the internet is full of people, is full of information. It's out there. You can get it. And it doesn't matter if you did something or not. Is something that has happened. And sometimes I think that so many people who are not black try to say, well, I don't treat people this way and I haven't done any of this. And, you know, I'm not the one who had slaves. No, you're not. I'm not stupid. You weren't here hundreds of years ago. Um, However, this is something that happened in this country where you live. So even though you didn't actually do it, understand the benefits that you get from it. Understand the problems that we have because of it. And with more understanding, I think that will help to help some of the issues Mm -hmm. that we have. And sometimes it can be frustrating when people just won't acknowledge that. And it's like... I'm not saying it's your fault because you have privilege because you were born into it, but it is your fault when you choose to ignore it. And when you choose to ignore what your privilege allows you, you've got to step outside of your comfort zone. You are going to learn some things that you don't like um, about your friends, your family, people you work with. And this is for everybody. Um, I was just about to say, that goes for all of us. We're all, as we start to fix what's going on, we're all going to be having uncomfortable, Black people are going to be having uncom- uncomfortable conversations with each other. There are some things that, you know, we also need to get together and get a little bit more organized and focus on the end goal and what it is that we're trying to accomplish. Um, it's going to be a lot of uncomfortable conversations. And I hope that you guys have those. Um, I hope that if you do have a question, I don't know what I can really help with, but don't be afraid to ask me. I won't bite your head out off. Uh, I think also too, sometimes when I'm having conversations with people, I've take for granted what I know versus what they may not know. And so, um, yeah, if you have a question or something that you want to talk about, I'm on Instagram. I haven't been getting on live and stuff like I usually do because I've been very frustrated, very tired. It's just exhausting. It's draining. It's sad that it's 2020 and we're still fighting a fight that our great grandparents were fighting. Great, great, great grandparents are fighting. And it's like as, as much freedom as we have, there's still people who don't really have it. And even with all that I know and all that I've done in my life, I recognize even the privilege that I have. Every person doesn't live a life like me. They haven't been afforded the opportunities that I have. I talk about, you know, knowing things and having knowledge and education. Everybody doesn't have that. Everybody doesn't come from a family that encouraged that. And so, you know, if that's you, it's not too late. It's never too late. Today is a new day. Learn something. And figure out what your role can be to help fix these issues. It's not going to happen overnight. but And you've got to be in it for the long haul. But figure out what it is that you can do and how you can help. Even if it's just reposting something, sharing some information. Start there and then figure out what else you can do. But we can't just rely on this imaginary somebody else or these other people to make it happen. Yeah. We've all got to do our part. And so with this short episode this week, I know you have at least an extra hour 
take the time that you would normally be listening to us and go go research some stuff. Go figure out some things. Make sure that you're registered. If you're old enough to vote, if you're eligible to vote, see where you're registered. Find your place. Make sure you haven't missed the election. If you have, we got another one coming up. So it's not too late. It's free to do. Find the information. And if you need help finding the information, hit us up. We can help you. Anything you want to add? Um, I would just say I love y'all. I hope that everyone is staying safe. If you are going out in the protest, make sure you have your mask on. Um, and just be safe. We're here for y'all. We stand with y'all. And there's that. I'm going to put some information in the description box, some numbers that you can text, some good uh, websites that will be excellent resources for you to find out more information on the things that we talked about. And then Medina has also sent me some clips of uh, some different people speaking that she wanted to share. So take a listen to that after we finish talking and um, hopefully we'll be in a different spot next week. Until then, you guys, bye. bye. And I, for one, as a Muslim, believe that the white man is intelligent enough. If he were made to realize how black people really feel and how fed up we are without that old compromising sweet talk. Stop sweet talking. Tell him how you feel.